The five-cylinder engine is a rare machine. With its odd number of cylinders, it makes us think that its masses are unbalanced and it simply cannot be built. But against all odds, to put cylinders in line is not the only way to do it. We also have the V5 and the VR5 engine. The most famous inline 5 is the Audi Quattro. In 1980, this car developed 200 horsepower with its 2.1 turbo engine for the road use version and 370 horsepower for the rally championship. This rally car was the first to be connected to an all-wheel drive transmission that also had torsion differentials. The other brands used two-wheel drive vehicles because they thought that all-wheel drive systems adds a lot of weight to the vehicle and would have many friction losses in the transmission, where it was clearly demonstrated that their assumptions were very wrong. The large gearbox that was mounted longitudinally could only be associated with a shorter engine, the five-cylinder. These Audi engines are widely used today in drag racing in Scandinavia, where there are units with 1,300 horsepower. This engine was also sold as naturally aspirated with a single carburetor in many Audi cars. It is an EA 827 engine, but with an extra cylinder. Although many were built, the five-cylinder were avoided because it does not work so smooth with a single carburetor since the intake manifold ends up being too large and the distant cylinders receive a poor fuel mixture. Every 144 degrees of rotation, there's a combustion stroke, which means that there's always more than one cylinder powering the crankshaft at the same time, giving an even and constant power delivery. But also, two cylinders are aspirating air at the same time. Its firing order is one, two, four, five, three. Its crankshaft has connecting rod journals distributed every 72 degrees. Anyway, this gives it a very beautiful and peculiar sound. However, it has an imbalance which causes the engine to tend to rotate sideways. These vibrations are counteracted by balance shafts that add inertia, worsening acceleration, fuel consumption, and manufacturing costs. Tests were carried out with two large carburetors for the two distant cylinders and a small one for the central one. But they turned out to be very expensive and the performance was insufficient. The only way to use this engine correctly was with five carburetors, which increased tuning work and costs. For this reason, in the past, they were mainly not used and it was preferable to go directly to a six-cylinder that already worked correctly with a single carburetor and had perfect primary and secondary balance without the need to use balance shafts. With the appearance of electronic gasoline injection in the 80s, five cylinders began to be really viable. However, all diesel vehicles have injection, either mechanical or electronic and therefore the first five-cylinder engine to be sold in mass was the Mercedes-Benz OM617 diesel from 1974. The OM617 is the most durable engine that the Star brand has ever built. The project of this engine was from Ferdinand Porsche's grandson, who at the time had quarreled with his family at Porsche and was taken in by Mercedes-Benz. The engine was three liters. It had a cylinder head with a pre-chamber which increased engine power and without a turbo, it could deliver almost 90 horsepower. The injection pump was made by Bosch and could automatically decrease the diesel when the vehicle climbed a mountain where the air is less dense, thus reducing fuel consumption and avoiding black smoke. Later, they had the brilliant idea of turbocharging the engine, increasing power from 90 horsepower to over 200. Obviously, more resistant parts were installed, such as a nitrided crankshaft and oil injection below the pistons to cool them. The engine was taken and installed in the previous Benz test car and used to break more than 20 endurance records. This turbo engine was sold to the public but with only 120 horsepower to maintain its high durability. The W116 was the first turbocharged diesel sedan in history. Of course, there were other five cylinders before but they were not very successful and discontinued shortly after. Five cylinder engines are mainly used in those places where a six cylinder engine does not fit and a four cylinder engine would not be enough. It can be mounted longitudinally or transversely without problems. Finally, to survive, five cylinders today usually share parts with their smaller four cylinder brothers or also with the superior ones such as the V10, which after all are two five cylinder engines joined sideways. In this way, costs are lowered in terms of stock and, above all, in the design of parts such as pistons. Let's look at some cases like the naturally aspirated 2.5 liter from the Jetta or New Beetle. In 2005, this 150 and 170 horsepower engine was introduced. 
This engine was based on the previous 1990 five-cylinder Audi design and the lubrication system was improved to have the same width journals as the four-cylinder engines. The cylinder head was based on the Lamborghini Gallardo 5.0 liter V10, sharing some parts and designs. This engine turned out to be one of the Volkswagen Group's longest lasting engines until it was later replaced by the 1.8 turbo and 1.4 turbo. However, this five-cylinder engine presented the basis for the construction of the 2.5 turbo engine for the Audi RS with 335 horsepower in 2010. The block design is exactly the same, except that the turbo version uses another steel alloy that is more resistant than the NA version. The crankshaft is also the same but with a superior forging process to withstand twice the power. It should be noted that it shares the connecting rod bearings with the aspirated version, among other parts such as the timing chain. The cylinder head also has the same shape as the naturally aspirated 2.5, but with the following modifications for being a turbo vehicle. The aluminum silicon alloy was changed for a more resistant one, adding magnesium. The water passages that circulate through the cylinder head were enlarged around the spark plug to extract more heat. The valves are sodium filled to extract the heat generated by turbocharged combustion. The exhaust valve seats are tempered. The intake ports were redesigned for direct injection with better turbulence. The upper part was modified for the installation of the high-pressure fuel pump. The turbo is a BorgWarner K16 modified at Audi's request with the capacity to compress 7 liters of air per second at 17 psi or 1.2 bar. That's a lot of air to burn. Later in 2017, the new version called EA855 Evo came out. The previous 2.5T steel engine was completely discarded and became aluminum alloyed with silicon and magnesium, reducing weight by 57 pounds in addition to having improved heat conduction. The crankshaft, connecting rods, and pistons were all improved, shrunken, and lightened to have greater acceleration and less friction. The reality is that in this case, the EA855 Evo is a pioneer in technology, and other engines will probably be copied from it. There are more successful five-cylinder engines, but I cannot name them all. Now, moving on to the VR5. These engines are similar to a 2.8 VR6 engine but with one less cylinder, remaining at 2.3 liters. It maintains all the same components such as valves, pistons, connecting rods, etc. VR engines are more similar to an inline engine rather than a V. In fact, the name comes from V for V engine and R for Reihe for line in German. Its firing order is also that of an inline engine. Its cylinders are tilted only 15 degrees compared to the traditional 60 or 90 degrees. The engine does not have the cylinders aligned with the crankshaft, but rather they have an excessive offset of 12.5 millimeters from the center. This inclination causes the connecting rods to work with less angle on one side and with more on the other side, which reduces the efficiency of the engine, increases friction, and therefore delivers less performance and consumes more fuel. However, its main advantage is that it's physically very small, which allows it to be installed in almost any car, and in this way, obtain a much larger engine, which although it will have less power compared to another of the same displacement, will still be more powerful than a four-cylinder one. This compact design also allows it to have a single cylinder head, as in an inline engine, significantly reducing costs. However, due to stricter anti-pollution regulations, the VR5 engines died, and the VR6s are close to extinction. Finally, the V5 engine. This engine is really strange. In 2002, this machine was used in the MotoGP, where Honda invented this engine of almost one liter of displacement with three cylinders at the front and two at the rear. The engine is a true V with 75.5 degrees. The outer cylinders share journals as in a V engine, while the front central cylinder runs alone. This configuration gives it few vibrations when rotating at 14,000 RPM and thus generates 210 horsepower. Honda managed to win the championship two consecutive times. The last version of this engine came out in 2006 with shorter pistons and several improvements, giving it 260 horsepower at 16,000 RPM. Later, as the speed of the motorcycles was too high and dangerous, the regulations changed and reduced the maximum displacement to 0.8 liters, where at this point the five-cylinder engine was already heavy and inefficient and a V4 was preferred. Strangely, Honda never manufactured V5 engines to be sold to the public as they did with the oval piston engine. The design of any engine involves having knowledge of mathematics and science, even computer science, which are often difficult to learn. But today, with Brilliant.org, things become easier. The idea here is to learn by doing. They teach you a concept, and then immediately you get to try it out in a fun and engaging way. There's a wide range of content, and they're even adding new courses from time to time. 
Instead of just learning a formula and blindly plugging in the numbers, you get to visually see why that formula works. Brilliant recently launched a ton of new content and data, all of which uses real-world data to train you to see trends and make better informed decisions. Perfect for learners of any level to start or continue learning data analysis with a fully built-out suite of new content. From Bayes' theorem to multiple linear regression, learn how to parse and visualize massive data sets to make them easier to interpret. Gain insight by working with real data sets from sources like Starbucks, X or Twitter, Spotify, and more. Get familiar with Python and start building programs on day one with a built-in drag-and-drop editor. Learn essential coding elements from loops and variables to nesting and conditionals. Develop your mind to think like a programmer, building a strong foundation and writing robust programs. There's nothing quite so satisfying as when that light bulb goes off in your brain. I like Brilliant because it shows that learning can and should be fun. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash repairman22 or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Comment why you think this never happened. Also, share the video with your friends and like and subscribe. See you next time.